it has been revealed that illiteracy among the younger generations in Malaysia is a serious problem. 1,000 out of 11,000 students who were chosen to undergo the national service training were illiterate. Reacting to the news about NS illiterates, Union Secretary Lok Yim Ping said that some of these students may have mental disabilities or were just simply slow learners. However, after a mere 30 credit hours of learning, these 1,000 students were able to read and write. This proves that the support given to illiterate students should be no different from the support given to any other student. This is Megan Tan reporting. For G News. Education is considered a privilege to some children, but that does not stop them from wanting to learn as they seek to improve the quality of their lives. With that thought in mind, Amanda and a few volunteers came together to create a mobile library filled with books reaching out to village and school children so that their knowledge and world can be expanded through reading. This is the Reading Bus. It was the one summer where my sister and I were both in Kuching and being Iban as well, we go back to our hometown and we see like these kids doing nothing. Mm -hmm. So our idea was to go and teach kids to read. It was a simple ideology that we wanted to pursue. And now yeah. you brought it on to mm -hmm. Semenanjung. Yep. That's why we're here in Kuala Lumpur. Yes, that's right. What's the session like? Okay, what it is is it is just two hours maximum two to three hours on a Saturday in school and we teach primary standard one to standard six and I'll allocate the volunteers they can be from universities or companies or just people who just want to spend their weekends doing something for the kids and the kids would learn ten words mm -hmm. maybe minimum uh, a session yes. and then they'll learn how to use the word how to spell the word how to act out the word. Oh, that's nice. So it's yeah. kind of like a very interactive mm -hmm. session. Mm -hmm. Were the teachers okay with it when you guys first came? Did they feel like, you know, like how, <laughs> you know, we don't need help? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can't run away from people feeling uncomfortable, but I think once they're part of it, we tend to bring the teachers over. They see how it works. They become very into it as well. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, it helps them. Uh, encourage the students more. Oh, very nice. And what made you want to help like people and to volunteer? Ever since I was little, my parents um, always encouraged us to read. And Christmas presents, birthday presents were mainly books for the fact that grandma believed that every page is a present and knowledge yeah. is something that no one can take away from you. So I guess what inspired me sort of is that's my way of giving back mm -hmm. without making them feel like they're not good. You know what I mean? Like in school, yeah. you can think like, who's going to help me? But when you learn how to read, you can sort of help yourself. And I have to agree though, I mean, I think a lot of times, uh, even myself, for me to pick up a book mm -hmm. and finish the book yep. is quite a challenge as well. Yep. So I think like the younger generation should actually mm -hmm. you know, be exposed to the joy of reading. Yes. These days, people are so into technology. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but I have to agree. It Everyone is just looking at their phones yeah. all the time. Even reading a book on your phone, like e-books, and it's not the same as picking up a hard copy and knowing that word or not knowing a word and looking it up in the dictionary and trying to use it it's very different so yeah pick up a book buy your friend a book encourage <laughs> kids to read you are my age and you're doing so much wow i feel like i need to do something with my life right now oh my gosh that's why you're here <laughs> Amanda's sincerity in her efforts of educating these children is inevitable and I am so moved by her passion for the kids. I even had the opportunity to sit in for one of the classes they were conducting and had first-hand experience of what the reading bus was all about. So there's a teacher in front who's guiding them through the storybook right now that we're reading. It's called Tutti. So what they do is they go page by page and they learn every the words and how to pronounce them. And they relate them to like daily stuff, for instance, like the ears, what do we use them for. So it's a very interactive process. Big eyes. What what are eyes? Where's your eye? 
Where's your eye? Your eye. Where? Here? Yes. Amanda and these young volunteers are truly an inspiration. I'm pretty sure you'd be inspired too if you've seen the work and progress they have made with the children. I reckon that must be very fulfilling. But don't take my word for it, let's hear what these girls have to say. A lot of youngsters and stuff like that, we hear about the ways to help people but not everyone would actually come up and say yes I'm going to do it and actually do it. So what, what made you guys want to help out? Because I know the Ready Mask is all about like children, we teach them and to me it's very exciting to see them like wow their smiles, their, their laughter. Yeah. It's like overwhelming to us. <laughs> Sometimes after I've taught them and I ask them was it fun and the way they answer the questions and they're so happy to <laughs> read. <laughs> so it's like the That's a very like fulfilling and satisfying experience, right? I got to sit in in one of the reading sessions and it was a lot of fun. And you, are you guys going to keep on doing this? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Because there's so many things you can learn through reading, you know, you keep on learning more and more about the world. You gain more knowledge, you can change your view. You open your eyes. Yeah. Food. There's so many more things to be learned, especially through reading. Yeah, I know. You guys are so sweet. <laughs> Okay, is there ice cream truck here? Then I'll buy you guys ice cream for being so sweet. Yay! I have nothing but high praises for Amanda and the volunteers for their hard work and compassion in spreading the joy of learning through reading. And I sure hope that someday I can be part of that too. Traditional costumes are treasures that have centuries of history. But these clothing are no longer common among our generation today because they are often perceived as outfits for festive celebrations and special occasions. But you know what? I'm going to show you how you can easily incorporate them into your daily wardrobe with style. This green top totally screams Raya with its unique prints, long belt sleeves and sheer cuff ends. Pair it with a long fitted skirt and you'll have a festive outfit that stands out from the rest. Complete this look with matching accessories and a pair of classic black pumps and you're ready for your first open house. But if you're looking for an alternative style for your everyday wear, replace the long fitted skirt with a staple black knee length skirt. A quick switch up and you have the perfect outfit for work or an evening date. This one-of-a-kind sheer kabaya top with mandarin collar and beautiful sequins is another one of my favourite traditional pieces. Match it with a pastel-coloured long skirt and you get an outfit that is elegant, feminine and easy on the eyes. Also, try to stay within the soft colour scheme by pairing this piece with a beige-coloured wedge. Now, remove the skirt and throw in a pair of denim jeans to turn the look instantly from traditional to casual. This look may not be a fashion norm, but it sure sets you apart from the rest in a stylish way. Don't just reserve your traditional outfits to festive seasons and special occasions. Think outside of the box and create a whole new sense of style by crossing between traditional and modern. There is no limit when it comes to fashion. Judging by this cat statue over here, I'm pretty sure you guys can guess where I am. I'm in Kuching! Funny thing is, the name Kuching has got nothing to do with cats whatsoever. Some of you may not know this, but the name Kuching came from a Kuching River, which originates from Cat Eye Hill, which translates to Bukit Mata Kuching in Malay. And Mata Kuching is a local fruit. But of course, I'm not here to give you guys a history or BM lesson. I'm here to visit Amanda because this is her hometown and apparently, She's bringing someone special. Hi! Hi! Hi, Megan! Hi, Amanda! Oh, welcome to the kitchen. So where's that special person you that you're meet bringing? Meet yes, of course. Sasha! You guys are here, Sasha! Hi, Okay. 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 What are we going to do now? Are you hungry? Yes, I am. Sort of. Yeah. Let's go. Which way? Which way? Let's go. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> It isn't my first time visiting this small town because Kuching seems to have its way of drawing me back. I always get that warm feeling whenever I come here. Kind of like the feeling I got from the Iban sisters upon meeting them. They sure know how to make you feel right at home. I'm guessing their great hospitality is something they picked up from being in a tightly knit family. And you guys grew up in like a quite a big family, right? Mm -hmm. How do they take it, you know, with the reading bus thing that both of you created? Are they very supportive? They are. They the are idea. very, um, especially grandma. Yeah. She's really encouraging that she's always like, you know, books are so important. Mom has always um, cultivated us. 
to always do our best. When we couldn't drive yet, so mom, grandma would actually send us over to uh, the group's place to yeah. get ready and go off to or the Oransi villages. Oh, very nice. And I assume the both of you place a lot of importance when it comes to education. Yep. That's why you yes. created Reading Bus, right? Yeah. How do you think like education has shaped you into the person that you are today? I think we're very um, privileged in, in terms of this generation to actually have educate to be able to study abroad for education. But other than that, just having knowledge, um, knowing how to read, how to write, how to speak, they're all very important aspects of how to grow. And you have an interesting story I hear <laughs> about the whole reading thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so funny. I like to tell people this story because do you know the term buta who? Yes, yeah, so someone who doesn't know. Really illiterate. Yeah, illiterate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Correct. I actually was a slow learner in primary 1 and primary 2 and I only knew how to read when I was in primary 3. Okay. So yeah, uh, I remember when my mom was driving and I was in the back seat and I was passing through all these um, sign. sign boards that had like car deals and I was like, what is this? I can read signs and I found that really interesting. From that day on, I don't know why I really found that reading is like Really words with yeah. like just something that you draw that you can actually read out loud. I don't know, I had the epiphany. I thought that was so it's like, wow, wow my I put the letters together and, and it becomes yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then mm -hmm. I, I remember that day I pick up the book that my grandparents oh, like we encourage us to read and I was <laughs> reading it out loud and I'm like, words make meaning. <laughs> yeah. So I like to share that when I talk tell the kids that like, oh when you do you read, you know you Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you pass by something and you see something, you, you don't know what you're reading until you actually appreciate what you're That's reading. That's true. And at the end of the day, I think it's all about spreading the joy yeah. of reading, right? Making mm -hmm. people see how fun reading mm -hmm. can be. That's true. Cultivating the interest to read among people is definitely not an easy task. But these girls did it with love, patience and a whole lot of fun. And speaking of fun, the girls told me that they had made plans to bring me someplace fun, which involved rocks. <gasps> Oh no! The more I think about it, yes. the more nervous I am. This is the girl's idea of fun. <laughs> is it really fun? It, it is. is like that. Oh, it is fun. It's yeah. fun. Trust fun. us. Okay, okay. I trust you, girl. Yeah. I'm really excited because I've never climbed an actual rock before. I've only done wall climbing. But I can't say that I'm not nervous though because standing here, looking up at this wall. You can do it. It looks very intimidating. Let's go rock this Let's rock. Go. <laughs> Don't be fooled by our smiles and laughter because I wasn't kidding when I said it looked intimidating. Thankfully, Mel gave us some good tips and safety briefing before. Way to climb the rock, or rock climbing is, mm -hmm. almost like a ladder. Use your hands for balance, legs push yourself up. Okay. Beginners will use everything. Exactly. Right. Elbows, knees, forearms. Yeah, everything you like. Thighs, yeah, yeah exactly. And you were telling her climb like a girl, right? Yeah. Yes, climb like a girl. Good thing climb is we're all girls. Wait, yeah, so stay relaxed. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> let's, cool. let's go. Okay, Megan. Yeah. Then wait. <laughs> yeah, so can you see those metal ring bolts in the wall? Those those are the points you need to follow up. <laughs> yeah, good. That's it. Good, yeah. Climb like a girl, says Mel. Well, this is because guys usually have the natural instinct of using their upper body strength when they climb, which is the wrong technique. All about the legs and pushing yourself up. The climb was easier than I thought. Oh then again, it was partly because Amanda got the tougher side of the staircase wall. Well, despite struggling a little, that did not stop my girl from making it to the top. The girls were right. Rock climbing proved to be a lot more fun than I imagined. I will not doubt my Iban sisters ever again when it comes to having fun. We did it! Oh Good job, girls! High five, high five, 10, 5, 15, 5, 20, There's nothing wrong with looking feminine all the time, but every now and then, it's good to add a little bit of edge to your feminine appearance. So I'm going to show you how to achieve the street punk makeup. Firstly, with your foundation and brows done, use a waterproof black pencil liner to rim your entire eye. Don't worry about it not being perfect because you will need to blend it out later. Told ya! Now smudge the black eyeliner with a small pencil brush to blend the harsh pencil line. Then, apply a dark-coloured cream eyeshadow all over your eyelids with your finger. 
starting on the outer corners and blend inwards. This is a quick and simple way to create a smoky eye look. With some black eyeshadow, pack the color on the outer half of your eyes and once again, blend inwards. The color should be more intense on the outer corners, fading in gradually. Apply some silver grey eyeshadow over the front portion of your eyes. Then bring the same eyeshadow down to your lower lash line as well as inner corners. For a subtle pop of color, apply a bit of deep purple eyeshadow or any color of your choice along the ends of your lower lash line. Next, seal your eye makeup by applying a few coats of mascara to complete the smoky eye effect. Then, apply a rosy blush along your cheekbones to bring out the hollows of your cheeks and give your face a sculpted look. Finally, use the leftover foundation on your makeup sponge and pat it over your lips to conceal your natural lip color. You can also use the excess on your powder puff to do the same. Finish off the look by dabbing some peachy nude lipstick on your lips. And your street punk makeup look is complete. Ah, uh, with all this wind in my hair, I sure feel like Avril Lavigne. Kidding. It's hard not to feel sexy and dramatic with such strong eyes. But at the end of the day, what's most important is that you rock this look with confidence. Amanda, where are we and what are we doing here? Okay. This is where I used to Najat, which oh. is the Iban traditional mm -hmm. dance. The reason why it's so special today uh -huh. is because I'm actually going to get you to do the whole Ngapan thing. Ngapan's actually wearing the whole Iban costume. Oh, that's nice! I'm excited! So, I get to be transformed into an Iban princess. That's right. And I get to do the Najat as well. Well, I hope that I do your culture justice. Trust me. <laughs> So the higher the hair is, the more beautiful it looks, or...? Ante, ante bam dek lalu tinggi. Subu, subu tinggi, nane nampak, de la jante. Habis ni bak gambar banyak, bak gambar banyak. I'm about to be transformed into an Iban lady. This is Maria and Pam. Yeah. Maria is necklace. This is probably the biggest necklace I've ever put on in my life. <laughs> I'm glad I got to do this at least once. Can tell people that I have put on a traditional Iban costume. You can't help but feel or rather act like a lady when you're in a costume such as this. With very graceful and demure movements, I was trying very hard to be careful not to ruin anything. The ngajat is often performed during gawai to entertain people who enjoyed this dance in the olden days. It involves very intricate movements. And as a city girl, it's hard to find people who continue to practice their family traditions from centuries ago. So it's very refreshing for me to see Amanda and her family who continue to embrace their ethnicity. One, two, three, and four. And then five. Since it's my last day in Kuching, we decided to take a little detour before dinner and headed to the beach at Damai Central to check out the most amazing sunset view. I'm not exaggerating. I mean, just look at it. Spending time with Amanda and Tasha reminded me of my relationship with my own sister. Perhaps that's the reason why we've bonded so well in such a short period of time. And because we've grown so attached, they've adopted me as their long-lost cousin. They even gave me an Iban name. Okay, hit me with that name. It will be Megan Julan Tan. Wow! It, it all ends with N. And what does that mean, Julan? The girls that we know named Julan are very precious, very sweet, very warm. So that's what we think about you. Don't worry. Oh, 
Aw, thank you. I will keep that name, Megan Julantan. <laughs> I, I love how you guys just clap at the same time on cue. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Reading Bus, of course, has been around for what, five, six years now? Yeah. Well, take me back to you know when it first started uh, and to what it is today. How has the journey been? We wanted to make this like whatever it is that we do, that the Kampong people can come in and actually do it themselves. We didn't want to bring like all the high tech gadgets and stuff like that. So we were looking more towards like long term. At the time, it was actually just Tasha and a, a few others, about five of them. Yeah. Because at the time I was still in Perth finishing up my studies. Right. And I just finished for five. Yeah. So I just yeah. she went on to do it. Some of the teachers they were studying to be teachers. Some of them were like, like educators, like they were like professors and stuff like that. And they were like, yeah, let's try to do this, you know, we just buy a four-wheel drive, go into the and just books that we used were like donated books in the beginning. It wasn't oh, right. like a system or anything like that. And you guys didn't even know where you guys were headed. It was kind of like a, a, what, a test run. Yeah. At first, of course, it's very daunting to get people just come in and show they know better, sort of. I mean, it's, you can't really get away from feeling like that, but at the same time, you just have to be warm and compassionate and sort of just go in there and do your best. Be sincere when you teach these kids. They want to learn and you want to help. Like there was this one time where I met a 14 year old girl. She's supposed to be in Form 2 but she stopped going to school because, not because she lost interest but because she didn't have the encouragement and the support from her family because there were just too many siblings. And you can't really blame their parents for not pushing them as well. There's just so many other younger ones to take care of so I felt really sad and at the same time really grateful that I had the opportunity to continue my studies and that my parents were really supportive. So in that sense, I wanted to be there for her as a big sister and just knowing that she came and um, asked for help when we were there, the whole team, it was, it was touching and very encouraging for the team. And I think with the reading bus, it's a real life example that so, Malaysians are so helpful in that way, like, you know, you can count on us. It's not every day that you meet individuals as selfless as Amanda and Tasha who continuously give back to the community and reach out to those in need without wanting anything in return, but merely a better future for the less privileged children. These girls have certainly opened up my eyes to see how important it is for every child to receive proper and quality education. They have also opened up my heart and made me realize that there is still a lot of good in this world and that if you have the ability to make a difference in one's life, why not step up and lend a helping hand? Every little bit goes a long way. Next week on Jitang Year 2. You can almost visualize all it. All the hard work and that sweat and yeah, yeah, exactly. Girl power. How about I race you all the way over there? Oh. <laughs> <laughs>